Hello everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial and this week we are modeling the automotive wing mirror. If you want to become a digital modeler who is able to create very high quality surfaces and also understand reverse engineering, the next 15 minutes will do a lot of good for you. We are modeling everything that we haven't modeled last week. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so uh, let's just kick off with the workflow. Uh, we are going to start with uh, tweaking this blend from last week because I have noticed that it's not exactly true to the scan. After that, we are going to move on to the front head-on plastic frame. We are going to examine the scan. We are going to realize that uh, the bottom area and the side area doesn't have the groove that we created last week. We are moving on to the swing arm. In here, we are just making sure that the swing arm stays proportionally attractive to everything that we have modeled last week. We are also making sure that the swing arm is wider at the beginning and it's getting narrower as it runs towards the A-pillar. Here, we are creating the bottom support surfaces and we patch out the geometry that will be directly connected to the A-pillar. In the last step, we are going to create these cutouts for the support arm swing. Just make sure that these two different cutouts have their pivot points exactly in the same spot. Otherwise, you won't be able to rotate the swing mirror. All right, so let's move on to the bottom blend. Let's use the curvature analysis with the principal max and by doing so we can realize that the blend is probably not at the right spot. I can see the yellow bump in the scan. It's probably where we don't even have a G1 connection. We only have position G0. So I decided to move the edge of the blend. I'm trying to make sure that the blend begins right where the scan shows. I do quick untrimming and realigning G0. Okay, it looks like the blend is still hovering in the air. I'm going to grab the holes and push the CVs in. Okay, so I pushed the CVs, but I can see that um, my comb tangency break is not consistent so I'm just carry on pushing and pulling CVs just to make this comb curvature slightly better. At this moment I'm looking at my scan and I compare it to the geometry I just built and I can see that this bottom blend is not exactly right so I decided to move all the CVs down just to slightly better match the scan. I slide the CVs and at the same time I consult my scan. After that I just reproject the curves and trim away the portion I don't need. At any time I can step back, look at the blend again and if needed tweak the CVs again. Let's move on to the head-on frame. We are not going to create a curve profiles from scratch but rather we will copy the perimeter curves from here and move them down to the desired location at two reference planes, here and here. At the same time, I've noticed that we don't need a groove feature at the bottom and on the inner side surface. So, we are going to remove the feature we created in our previous tutorial. We will use our reference planes to intersect these two patches to obtain curves on surfaces so that we will have a width reference for our surface blends to align to. I aligned this blend to the stripe of the side surface, making a smooth transition. I remembered to keep edge align option on. I also did the same on the other side. You can see how this feature is gradually diving in on one side and washing off on the other.
Now we are borrowing the perimeter curves that we will be offsetting at a certain distance to obtain a desired width of the plastic head-on frame. Just one thing to notice, around this corner, because we have a curve on surface that we will create our curve from, we might run into troubles and we would have to manually move our CVs. I tried two different methods of obtaining a curve of the surface to see which will give us better results. First, let's just use the fit curve tool. Second one is the patch precision tool which lets us sketch a lattice net on the surface. From here we can decide which curve is better. Ok, let's pick the first curve and delete the other one. Did you notice that the CVs of our curve don't match the surface? We need to fix that. Remember that this side is G2 curvature and the other side can only be position G0. Let's finally offset the first batch of curves to the desired location. To do that, we can refer to our reference plane. We will do the same with the other set of curves. Let's compare the curves to the actual shape of the model. This is a good starting point as we can scale the curves to better fit the scan. Having said that though, we will still need to carefully redesign the curves to match the profile. Ok, here we have almost all curves set and done. I said almost all because we are missing geometry around the bottom. Here we don't need a groove. Here we will need to extend the existing surfaces to obtain the anchor edges. Modeling this way will help us remove the groove feature. Let's linearly extend this side patch with merge off. Now we can align G1 tangency to the edge of the surface. Let's add one more degree. This extra degree will protect our tangency when we align patch to the opposite curve. At last, just to confirm that our surface has some crown, we can check the curvature comb. I think it looks pretty good. Here is our complete head-on outer geometry. Behind the scenes I created the inner surfaces. I called out the mirror reflective surface and just very quickly intersected this with our head-on frame. If you sometimes face the difficulties of trimming just like I do in here, just quickly check the geometry. As you can see our topology has some minor gaps, which we can eliminate by aligning and satisfying the position requirements. If your topology has no gaps issues, you will be able to easily trim away portions of unwanted geometry. The last thing to do is to give these patches some crown. As an example, let's just manipulate these two surfaces by giving them some lead-in. Remember that paying attention to details like these will make your model look so much better. Add one degree, buff it out, then add another degree and slide holes up and down to get the comb more acceleration. We are going to move on to the construction of the support arm. We want to build this triangular surface. I want to quickly introduce two different ways of doing it. The first one is to borrow our bottom surface. We can just extend it with the merge option off to obtain an extra patch. The second method is to simply use the monorail tool. If your surface has many spans, you just manually remove them. Because our patch doesn't cover a big area, we can make it maybe something like 
three by three. It is very crucial to observe our scan. Obviously, we need to stay true to it, but also, if possible, we could create edges to run along the scan topology. Here, we are aligning our edge to the orange area on the scan. We are gradually adding more geometry to the bottom support. At the same time, let's just keep an eye on our scan. Remember that the blue and purple colors mean negativity. Let's try to get a nice intersection between these two patches by moving them in any UV manner. Making theoretical intersections better will increase chances of building a nice fillet, which actually is what we are going to construct next. We create the fillet and can still adjust CDs of the adjacent surfaces. By observing the CDs at an acute angle, we will easily spot areas to improve. Let's play with the fillet settings to limit the complexity of the surface. Let's try to keep it as one patch. At the moment, don't worry if you lose good continuity. Topology of the patch is bad, but we can fix it. Let's rebuild this surface. Create curves at both ends, project them onto our surface and use Fit Curve tool to quickly rebuild the curves on surface. We still have the other longer edges to rebuild. We can create two side blend curves. At the moment they are G2 connected, but we can just reduce connection to G1 to improve CVs. The curve on the right side doesn't look good, so let's just delete it. Instead, we can copy the left curve and paste it onto the right side. If the curve is too long on this side, just use the Stretch Curve tool. Now, we are ready to create our square surface. CVs are not uniform, but we can slide holes. Let's realign and add CVs if needed. This way we can achieve a nice CV layout. In my own time I created this patch just to save some time. And now let's intersect our geometry and trim the excess of it away. In the next step let's just clean out our model trim some surfaces and examine how everything stacks up. Let's slow down a bit and look closer at this area of the scan. At this stage of modeling it is important to make some well-educated guesses, especially in this area. How would you organize patches in here if it was up to you? You can stop the video and give it a try, otherwise I will give you a hint in 3 two, one, now. Okay, so I decided that these two opposite sides don't need to be related. I can model them separately. The only mutual feature is that they are anchored to this patch above. Another point worth mentioning is this patch and its acceleration. By giving some lead-in, we obtained much better transition. The adjacent blend will join in much easier. And the whole model will look way better. I would also like to demonstrate an efficient way of CV manipulation with relation to scan data. Let's say we have these two surfaces position aligned with history. You can visually see what areas you still need to work on and simply slide CVs. Just like in this example. Sliding won't destroy patches that are already in close approximation to the scan data. However, by sliding CVs you can drag along adjacent surfaces. 
This way, you can simultaneously work on two or more patches without ruining work you are happy with. Last but not least, when you examine the curvature comb, it's always better to look at it in 3D space. And not only in fixed views, let's say like top and front. 3D space examination will tell you so much more about quality of your edges or curves. Here, for example, the comb is good in any view. It is very consistent and doesn't wave up or down. We have a little flick in here. It looks like our topology lifts up. There probably is a blend of some sort running to our A-pillar. But for purpose of our video, I will just leave it like this.